One of the questions that we constantly ask is, why is there suffering? Another formulation of that question is, why do good people have to suffer? Emerging from this pandemic, we also might be asking the question, why? Why did this happen? Now, trying to answer these questions from outside of a relationship with God, outside of a life of faith, that is, an attitude of trust in the presence of God and being open to his revelation and action, will lead us into dark places. Despair and not believing in God. Or at least thinking that God has abandoned us or does not care for us. However, attempting to approach these questions from a place of relationship with God, anchored in faith and hope, we might not get an answer, but we go deeper into the mystery of God, of who he is, and receive the life and love that God is offering to us. We can look to our own personal experiences to illustrate the two ways of trying to answer the questions about suffering, about life. We can also look to the book of Job. This inspired book is one of the hardest books in the Old Testament to get a handle on or to get a grasp of. We see God in a way that can maybe be off-putting allowing Satan to test the faithfulness of the righteous man, Job. Why would an all-powerful, all-good God do this? And really, the book does not provide an answer, which is even more frustrating for our human sensibilities. The book looks at some of the reasons why God would do this. Some of Job's so-called friends tell him it is because he is a sinner and he needs to repent. Another of his so-called friends tell him it is because God does not care for him or has abandoned him. In the midst of the storm, Job gets frustrated, and he lets that frustrate in no one to God. And then God speaks out of the whirlwind. And what does God say? You have no idea what I have done and what I am doing. And how does Job reply? With faith and with hope. Yes, I do not understand what you are doing, but I see, I witness you at work in the world and in the storm. We can also look at today's gospel to help us with the questions about suffering. Here we have Jesus asleep in the boat during the storm at sea. In many instances in the Bible, the sea symbolizes a place of evil forces that only God can control. And here Jesus manifests his divinity by calming the storm. Peace, be still. In our own lives, when the storms of life come in, when we have to endure certain suffering, sadly, our first inclination is to fear, to anxious worry, to lacking faith. We begin to think that God has abandoned us or God does not care for us, that he is asleep on the cushion. But when we reach out to God with faith and hope, he calms the storm. He offers our restless hearts peace. St. Augustine, in one of his sermons, takes us deeper into this passage from the gospel. He writes, Christian, Christ is asleep in your boat. Wake him up. He will command the storm and everything will be calm. You are afraid because you are asleep. You are tossed about on the stormy desires raised by the breath of those who tempt you to do evil because your faith is asleep. What does that mean, faith is asleep? It means you have forgotten your faith. 
to recall what you believe. Remember your faith. Wake Christ within you. Your faith will immediately still the frightening winds and waves of those who tempt you to do evil. Bishop Robert Barron explains, if we awaken to the presence of Christ within us, if we learn to live and see at a deeper level, if we live in basic trust rather than fear, then we can withstand even the most frightening storms. What I think this passage and these readings are inviting us to do is to let go of our ego, to let go of our pride and surrender to the one who calms the storm, letting his love lead us on even in the midst of suffering. St. John, in one of his letters, writes, Perfect love casts out fear. Through this conversion, we begin to see the interior renewal of our heart and our mind, becoming a new creation, letting the old pass away. With this newness in our life, this renewal happening within our heart, we find peace not in finding an answer to the suffering in my life and in this world, but in being open to the revelation of God at work in my life and in this world. What is he showing me? Where is he leading me? I might not understand it, I might never understand it, but God is present to me and to this world. And I will walk by faith and not by sight into the mystery of God, learning more about who he is and what he is doing in my life, receiving his life and his love.